Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our weekly OCI deep dive. For those of you that might be new to these events, uh, we're hosted on Cloud Customer Connect, which is our Oracle community forum for end users. I'll be dropping some links in the chat throughout the presentation today that lead you back to those forums. And if you haven't already joined us there, we invite you to create a free account, join in discussions, look for upcoming events of all kinds. My name is Kenna Ketrick. I'm a program manager with the OCI go-to-market team. And today we're joined by Shane Burgess, principal product manager for a technical deep dive into the newly released OCI certificate service. Thank you very much. Uh, the agenda today, I'm gonna give a brief overview of um, TLS certificates. Hopefully it's review for most of you, but if not, um, at least we'll be all on the same page. I'll talk about the certificate service. I'll go through a couple of use cases We'll do a demo and then uh, we'll have some time for your questions. So to start off um, with TLS certificates, the first thing you need to have is a set of private keys. Um, and this is usually done through uh, you know, a Unix command line or a command line option or a third party vendor. And then you create a certificate signing request and that signing request goes off to a certificate authority. The certificate authority would verify um, the domain ownership if it's a public certificate, and then go ahead and sign that certificate, which then could be installed on your web server or other service. So when a client a web browser comes into your web server, it makes that connection and the web server would then send its certificate down to the client. If the client um, trusts the certificate authority that signed the certificate, then it will go ahead and create another random set of keys um, and use the web server certificate to encrypt the public key and send it to the web server so that now each side has each other's keys, uh, public key, and you can have that encryption going in both directions. For a mutual connection, it's the same type of situation where the certificate gets sent to the client. If the client trusts the certificate, then the client would then send its certificate to the web server. And if the web server trusts that certificate, then your um, connection would be established. Here's just a sample of some of the public certificate authorities uh, that are out there. If we look at the center with DigiCert, of course, um, you have your root CA at the top, and then you have a number of intermediate and subordinate CAs. And you do this to design sort of separation and protection of your CA hierarchy. Um, basically, if one CA gets compromised, then everything in that chain would be compromised and you would have to revoke and reissue your entire structure underneath that. So you want to make sure that you're not, you, on, you don't only have a root, for example, because if you, if that was ever compromised, you would lose your entire tree. If we talk about the chain of trust, um, we have a reseller BCA at the bottom here. And if your browser went to a website that had a certificate from this reseller B, for example, it might not trust it because it might not know who it is. So the next thing it would do in the certificate chain, it would check uh, reseller A because that's the next CA in the, in the hierarchy. If it didn't trust that, then of course it goes all the way up to uh, the root certificate, which is DigiCert, which is chances are pretty good you're going to trust that. And therefore, because we trust DigiCert, we trust reseller B CA's certificate. So certificate pain points, um, it's fairly complicated if you're new to the process in getting everything set up and installed. Uh, traditionally, this is manual and it's error prone. Um, and if you're dealing with thousands of certificates, uh, that can be a full-time job for potentially a department of people. And of course, if your certificate ever expires because you didn't renew it in time, that means you have an outage for your service. We'll um, allow you to create a flexible CA hierarchy um, however you want to organize it, uh, we allow you to create your chain up to 10 nodes deep, and uh, you'll be able to create about 100 CAs if you need to. Um, it, it's fully managed for all of the certificate authorities in the certificate lifecycle, including revocation and automatic renewal of certificates. We have native integrations for services like the load balancer and the API gateway is going to be uh, released in the next couple of weeks. And LEAF certificates have extended extensions for multiple use cases, which we'll talk about a little bit later. We also support bring your own certificate in case you have specific requirements um, for a certificate signed by a specific CA. And this is part of Oracle's Security First initiative. And this is a completely free service. 
For certificate authorities, we do require an HSM private key, um, a hardware security module key. Um, this is the best security posture, and we want to make sure that your CAs don't get compromised um, and are protected. Uh, it's a key that comes from the KMS service. It's an asymmetric key, and that will be located in the customer your tenancy. Um, the certificate service doesn't have any access to your private keys, so that's one way that we're ensuring that your keys remain um, secure. We support the following key algorithms um, as well as signing algorithms. And of course, this confirms with the RFC 5280. The software keys for the certificates themselves are managed by the certificate service, and they are also backed by an HSM key. Um, again, the service won't have access to those keys, so your um, certificates will remain secure. We have three different options for managing certificates. Uh, managed internally is sort of the, the best way to go to give you full automation. Um, the CA in your tenancy will create a certificate that you can deploy to your uh, load balancer, for example, and then renewals will happen automatically and deployments will happen automatically. So once you set this up once, you won't ever have to worry about it. We also have a managed externally, um, which will, uh, in the use case that you have um, a requirement where your private key can't leave the premise, uh, has to be on site, you can go ahead and upload a certificate signing request and the CA in OCI can then sign that certificate so you can use it anywhere you want. And we also, again, support the bring your own certificate for the use cases where you have a public certificate uh, that you need to use. You can go ahead and upload that and import it into the service. The service can automatically deploy it to your load balancer, for example, and then you can sign up for um, certificate events so that you'll get alerted when that certificate, before that certificate is going to expire and then you can upload a new certificate uh, before it expires. Uh, we have some certificate rules um, for CAs, and basically this will control uh, when the certificate gets renewed and how frequently. Uh, we have some issuance rules, and basically that says um, your CA won't be able to create a certificate that has a validity period longer than n number of days. And uh, a roadmap item, more issuance rules that we'll have is um, the length of the path. So currently, I said before, we have uh, a CA hierarchy that can be 10 nodes deep. You might want to restrict that to only five or three, whatever your needs are. And we'll also have um, some certificate profile restrictions, and I'm going to cover those in the next slide. So we have some profiles that we've created for um, your convenience. Uh, these will populate the certificate, um, the, the fields accordingly, so you won't have to deal with them. And basically, we have four profiles defined. Um, one can be a server or a client, and that basically is good for a mutual TLS connection, for example. You can lock it down a little bit further and just create certificates that belong on the server side, or you can have them just on the client side. And we also have a code signing certificate as well. So for integrations, we've talked, uh, already have integrations with the load balancer and the API gateway is going to be released uh, in a couple of weeks. And again, this basically just is a configure once and uh, it takes care of the renewals and deployments for you automatically. There's also an association um, set once you deploy a certificate to a resource. And that association is uh, a layer of protection, basically. Um, if you have a long list of certificates and one is named you don't recognize, you don't think it's in use, and you try to delete it, because that association is on the load balancer, uh, with the load balancer, you won't be able to delete it until that association is um, removed. And then uh, revocation takes immediate effect. So um, anytime you have, uh, the way the revocation works in a certificate is once the client um, checks and uh, sees that it trusts the certificate from the CA, um, it will then go and check a revocation list. Usually it's a, a, a URL that they check and download the list and sees the certificate. If the certificate's on that list, then it won't trust the certificate. And if it's not, obviously you can continue and trust and make that connection. 
A couple of use cases. Um, we have a public certificate um, that has been uploaded into the load balancer. And obviously that means anyone on the internet with a connection can connect into your site and would trust that certificate. If we wanted to narrow it down to a private certificate situation, um, in you could say that everyone in red is part of a sales organization, for example, and they have an application that um, they use to keep track of lead generations or, or something of that nature. Uh, because all of the people in red are employees to that company, um, the company controls the devices and they can control the uh, certificate route of trust on those devices. So um, once they make the connection in, they get the load balance, the certificate from the load balancer, they see it in their trust stores and um, would accept that certificate. The people in gray obviously would not have the um, CA's certificate in their device, so that connection would not be trusted. On the back end, um, you can also make all of your connections um, encrypted using SSL. Uh, you can even have it a mutual um, TLS connection if you wanted that added security to make sure that all of your uh, resources are allowed to make that connection and communicate with each other. And then we have a code signing um, situation where a developer already has a set of private keys. They have a code signing SSL certificate and they have their application bundle. Um, they would go ahead and sign that and a timestamp and a hashtag would be generated using the keys and the certificate. And that would become part of the um, download that the client would use. The client would then obviously check the SSL certificate um, to see if it's trusted. And if it's trusted, then they can go ahead and um, install that application without any issues. For additional resources, uh, there's a blog here uh, and you can also find out more. I believe both of these links have been put in the chat so you can click those and find them. And my email address is there if you have any questions, comments, ideas, issues, um, whatever you want to reach out to me for, uh, my email address is there. Okay, so in OCI, um, under identity and security, we have a certificate section now. Um, the overview will take you to this page where you can create your uh, root certificate authority, your subordinate certificate authority, or a certificate. You can also import resources, uh, your pro public certificate, for example, and a CA bundle. And a CA bundle is uh, just the chain of trust used in mutual TS connections. So if we create a certificate authority, um, You'll get, you'll walk through this case. Uh, we have uh, workflow, excuse me. We have a couple of uh, choices you can do. You can create your root or create a subordinate. And I'm gonna create a subordinate here. Um, it's the same process. There's just one extra step that I'm going to uh, point out when we get there. And the name in the description is simply for um, you identifying that CA in the UI. Uh, you can put whatever you want here. It's not part of the certificate itself. It's just for you uh, and identification. So the common name is um, going to be part of the certificate. Uh, so you wanna make sure that that is correct. And any additional fields that you want to put in that are optional, uh, you can go ahead and do those if you choose. For um, here is the extra step. You would choose, because this is a subordinate CA, you would choose the CA that you want to sign this certificate. The not valid before and not valid after are um, the validity of the CA. If you leave not valid before blank, it will take the instance the um, CA is created as the not valid before time. And uh, because my root CA is 10 years, um, I'm we default to 10 years. I'm going to make this a, a five-year CA, the validity period for five years. And then um, the keys, you would have to select one of your HSM keys uh, in your tenancy, and then you can choose your signing algorithm as well. So the expiry rules, um, this is saying I can't create a certificate that lasts longer than 90 days. And here is the maximum number of days that um, I could create for any subordinate CA underneath this particular CA. 
And then your revocation um, configuration. We do have an option of skipping this step. I will caution you, however, if you do skip this step, then a cloud guard uh, alert is going to be generated and sent, um, letting you know that you really should create a um, revocation list. So you pick the bucket that you want to create the list in. You can create um, the name for it. And if you had any custom formatted URLs uh, that you wanted to add to that, you can add them there as well. And then you have a summary and you can go ahead and create that certificate. And you can see that it's going to, um, it's gonna take some time to process it and become active. Um, I'm going to jump over to another CA and create a certificate so we don't have to wait just for the sake of time. So the certificate, it's the same, similar process. Um, here, my choices are issued by an internal CA or I can upload the uh, signing request if I choose. And I'm just going to give this a name. And here, the common name, um, obviously you want to, if you have a, a domain registered that you want to use, you can put that here at this time. Um, we've also found that the common name for certificates is a deprecated field uh, in the spec, but some browsers are still using the common name and other browsers are looking at the subject alternative name. So for the best compatibility, put them in both places and you'll be covered. So here I can choose which profile I wanna use as we discussed before um, and the not valid before and not after are um, similar. I'm just going to narrow this down a little bit and the key algorithm there as well. You can choose which one you want to use as well as the additional fields for a signature algorithm. And here's my renewal rules. Um, this, particular certificate is going to get renewed 30 days prior to um, its expiry. And then if everything looks good, you go ahead and create your certificate. And you can see this certificate is initializing as well. Um, I'm going to jump over to a load balancer real quick while that initializes and walk you through the process there so you can see the integration. So I already have one, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. Um, and here I have a public IP address and I also have a reserved, uh, sorry, I don't, I'm in the wrong um, region. So uh, this will be a public, publicly accessible and I'll pick an IP that will be assigned to me. I'll go ahead and select my VCN and my subnet and then my back end uh, i have a simple linux server running apache in the back end my health check policy will be the same if i wanted to use ssl on the back end um, here is where i would configure that uh, this is the legacy way of uploading your certificates on the load balancer but if you use the certificate service, if you had some CA bundles that you had already loaded up, the drop-down list would uh, allow you to select them there. Or if you were going to use the certificate authority, you could grab um, whichever certificate authority you wanted to use. Um, the verified depth basically means in that chain of trust, how many hops you're going to go down. Um, and that's basically as a way to prevent uh, a DDoS attack, basically, because every hop and the processing power to um, evaluate that certificate chain is costly. So that's a way to help mitigate uh, a DDoS attack. Uh, I'm not set up for SSL on the back end, so I'm going to skip that. And once we get to the listener, um, again, you can choose how you want to manage your certificate, but we'll use the certificate service and you can see a list of the certificates um, that are available to me. 
you go ahead and select that. And on the advanced option, if uh, you wanted the mutual TLS connection on your listener, you could go ahead and select the bundle or um, the certificate authority you wanted to use for that chain of trust there as well. And once you set your log group, you can go ahead and initialize and then your load balancer will take some time um, to be created and come up to speed and then you're ready to set. Um, and that's pretty much all I have for the live demo. Um, and I can answer any questions at this point, if we have any. Hey Shane, we have one new question. Um, the question is, if I understand correctly, you can bring your own certificate to import, certificate, import a certificate signed by a public CA and then have OCI handle the placement of the certificate for example, in a load balancer, warn you when it will expire and replace it when you import a new certificate. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, uh, once you have imported that certificate into uh, the certificate service, once you get to the load balancer and you're selecting the uh, certificate from the dropdown, that imported certificate would be part of that list. So you could easily grab it from there. I will tell you that also uh, on our roadmap is an integration with a public CA. So uh, that should be out in the spring sometime um, so that if you needed a public certificate, uh, you'll be able to get it from the service automatically and then that would be renewed. So you wouldn't have to upload that in the future. All right, we don't have any additional questions at this time. Oh, wait, one just came in. Um, will certificates be a part of the web application firewall? Uh, it is, there are, we have two separate um, WAFs right now. We have a WAF at the edge and we have um, a WAF that was recently uh, released, integrated with the load balancer. If you put the certificate on the load balancer, uh, the WAF on the load balancer automatically benefits from it. Thank you. Looks like there's no other questions right now. Excellent. And then I think we're going to have Gopi in a couple of weeks to talk about WAF as well. So if that's part of your interest, uh, definitely come back for that. All right. I have one more conclusion poll that I'm launching for folks who are here with us. So if you have any feedback on that, we'd love to hear it. Um, and if you have any uh, further questions that come up as you're working with the service, um, again, Shane shared out his email, so feel free to reach out to Shane, um, and also feel free to go to those CCC forums and post questions and, and ask there. Um, and we will be uh, posting the replay and documentation and, and slides and everything uh, within 24 hours on the forum as well, so that will be available to you. I think we do have one more question, though, it looks like. I can answer that before we head out. All right. Uh, yes, we have one more question, Shane. If you have a certificate for an Apache web server, can you use OCI certificate, you can you use the OCI CLI to import and also the key on that web server? Um, yes. Uh, you can download, when you create a certificate, um, you can download the certificate and the private key. That option isn't available on the UI, but you can do it from the uh, CLI or the API. We just want to make sure to keep those keys private. We didn't want anybody to do it over the through the UI accidentally and uh, have an exposure. Great. Thank you so much. Um, as of right now, we have no more additional questions. Excellent. Thank you so much, Shane, for joining us to have this presentation. Thank you, Maywin, for being our Q&A help on the other end as well. Um, and thank you, everyone in the audience, for sticking around and learning something new today. Uh, and we hope that you will come back and join us for more events in the future. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>